Okay, so now in this video, um, I'm going to extend our discussion of how to calculate bank savings accounts interest payments um, when we have you know money coming in and out during uh, the month. Okay, um, and this this video, by the way, is part of a playlist. Um, the playlist link will be provided in the description of this video. Um, but previously, we've left the amount. Um, the same in the account and then just added money only through interest or we've only changed it once. So um, in real life, a lot of times you bring money in and out lots in your account and you still wanna know is the interest um, correctly being calculated, okay? So that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Now this bank account, I'm assuming um, it, uh, puts um, my interest payment every 13th of the month. Every bank is different. Some banks do it on the last day of the month. They might do it um, you know, on a different day. So you, got, you have to look to see your, your statement uh, and, and which day the um, interest is coming in and for how long they've been compounding the interest until that day, okay? So here, um, the interest is being compounded from every, the you know the 14th of one month to the 13th of the next. Okay, um, so let's see. We it also um, this bank uses daily compounding, which is really common. Most banks use daily compounding. They only give you the interest at the end of every month, so they give it to you at the end. But they've been keeping records and giving you interest theoretically on paper every day of the month. Okay, so N equals 366. This is a leap year, which is why it's 366. Some banks, despite it being a leap year, will use 365, okay? So you wanna check your bank, obviously, um, if it's using 365, that's gonna give you different numbers. Some banks use 360, I don't know why. Okay, it's very rare, even though you're getting the interest every month, it's very rare for a bank to compound monthly. So in other words, it's very rare for N to equal 12. It's not to say your bank isn't using N equal 12. It might be. It might be compounding monthly. But in my experience, and I have bank accounts in different banks, and I'm not, I don't see that. I see compounding daily, okay, as, as, as being the norm. Okay, so how, how do we check these? This is what I wanna know. I wanna check these numbers right here. All right, how do, how do I do that? Um, I'm gonna make a table over here where I, I start with my date. Um, I'm gonna do debit or credit. So my money going out or in. Um, and I have interest and balance, right? And this is, this is again, a theoretical balance because we only get the interest once a month, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it every day and see how things how it affects things. So starting with the day the account was opened on the t um, 10th. And I'm gonna go until I get all the way to the end of the year, all right? You ever see hashtags like that? It's probably because your your uh, cell width isn't enough. So I'm gonna double click, make my width a little wider. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way to the end of the year. And then, um, all right, and then I'm gonna well, let's let's first let's go ahead and just calculate. Um, so the first day my balance was a hundred thousand. That's uh, theoretically I opened an account and I put a hundred thousand dollars into it. Okay, on the tenth. So um, a lot of times on the day that you open an account, there's no interest on that day. Um, it, it actually starts the next day. But again, every bank's different. So that's something for you to look at, your, sta your own statement to determine what happened. Okay. All right. So on the second day, I've earned some interest. I'm going to use this formula to figure out what my balance should theoretically be on the second day. So it would be that balance times... Um, I'm using this formula right here, so open parentheses, one plus my uh, simple interest rate divided by my number of times per year it's compounded, so daily. All right, and then brought to the power n times t, so I'm, I'm calculating this for every day, so this is just one, okay? So press enter, 
and there we see um, my updated balance. The interest would just be the difference between these two. Okay. Um, I want to uh, be able to use this formula for this entire table. So in order to do that, I need to lock these two cells. So I use the dollar sign to lock them in place. All right, and then N2 will continue to uh, change. So I can let leave that one alone. Okay, so what I mean by that is now if I get my cursor to look like that black um, cross and I scroll it down, you can see N, N2 changed to N3, which is the next balance. And then um, these two cells are locked there. Okay, same thing happens here. These two get updated. Okay, um, so if I have no debits or credits, uh, this would this would work, right? I could just actually just press this and then like double click it all the way down. When I double click like that, it 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 brings the formula all the way through this whole table. Um, but let's not do that because I also have debits and credits. So how do I how do I take that into consideration? Well, your balance is not just your previous day's balance. It's your previous day's balance plus any debits or credits. Okay. So I'm assuming that you're using a negative number when you have a debit or money coming out of the account. So that's why I'm using that plus sign. Okay. And then your interest is not just the difference between these two, but it would be um, that minus any debits or credits that happened. Okay. So then once you have that, now you can scroll down. But okay, so but how do I get the debits and credits from this table over here? All right. And I don't want to have to manually put these in. Like on the fifth, I don't want to have to type in negative. It's a lot of work, especially as this table gets bigger. So what do I do instead? Instead of manually putting that in, I can have a formula. So the formula I'll use is index. Okay. So index, the first thing it's looking for is an array of whatever I'm indexing. All right, I'm indexing um, these debits and credits. Okay, actually, before I do this, I have a problem. This is not a debit or credit that I want to index. All right, these are interest payments, which I already have a, a column for interest payments. So let me move them. Okay, they cannot be in the same row. Okay, now that they're moved, now I can do this again. So equals index, I want to index this debits and credits row, or column, sorry. Um, and then, let's see, my row number, I'm going to match, I'm going to look up this date here, okay, and, all right, comma, I'm going to look it up from these dates over here. I want an exact match, so I type zero, close parentheses, close parentheses. This is going to give you NA because this date does not show up over here. So what I want to do is I want to say, I want to add something to this. If NA, then comma zero. Okay, so you see if NA, here's the value, otherwise it's a zero. All right, and that's what I want. So I can double click this and it'll fill in this formula for me um, all the way to the end. Okay, and I'll go ahead and format that as a number by pressing this little number button under the home ribbon. There's this number button. Okay, so it's formatting it as a, as a, I meant, um, as a dollar sign. Okay. All right. So it's pooling everything that I have on that table over there. So then once I have this and I have this like I wanted to, I can just highlight it and then double click. Actually, I guess just these two. Double click. There we go. All right. And there is a problem. There we go. Yeah, I, I hadn't updated that second formula. It was just this formula. Um, so we needed to take away the debit and credit like that. OK, so now when I double click, it should be good. Okay, so there we go. You see, I lost that $5,000. That's good. 
and then I got my interest based off of that um, that new balance okay which is a good thing that they calculate the new balance before the interest when you add money but then when you subtract money it does make your um, interest a little less that day all right so then on the 13th here's my um, my the balance that I was expecting to have also on this 13th here's the balance I was expecting to have so how do I check that I don't want to have to scroll through this entire file to find those numbers um, I can see that they're the same right but as this, as this gets bigger and bigger and I do this maybe even more than one year it becomes too much to look through it all so let's create a new column here called um, calculated balance calculated balance okay and um, I'm going to do this again using that index function so equals index and what I'm indexing now is this balance at the end okay and then I'm matching again the date so the 13th and then I'm looking through this this these dates here okay and an exact match is what I want okay and I don't have to worry about getting an NA um, I must have forgotten that last parentheses. I don't have to worry about getting an NA because um, I'm now I'm I'm looking up from these dates here and these dates. This is all the dates, okay? Um, if it's not there, then I haven't calculated it. So, okay. Um, I wouldn't want the calculated balance for these other dates because this table is adding daily um, interest. Um, but remember, in real life, they only give us the interest at the end of the month. So what I can do is I can actually just press Control C and then Control V, and I only want it for uh, when the interest actually comes in. So we can see that what I've calculated matches what the bank calculated. So we must be good to go. The bank is doing everything right, right? If you're off by a penny or so, not a big deal. But if you're off by several dollars, it's time to talk to the bank. Uh, sometimes they make mistakes. It's possible. Okay. So now suppose I want to project forward. Um, suppose I, every month, I'm going to, um, on the 5th, I'm going to take out money, I put it somewhere else, and on the 10th, I add in money. Suppose I do that every month for the rest of the year. Where am I going to be at the end of the year? Okay, so let's add to this table some sort of projection. Um, to do that, first thing I need is um, to calculate these, these, um, or to write these dates. Uh, I want the 5th, 10th, and 13th, etc., all the way until I get to the end of the year. So let me write month, day, year. Okay, so starting here, I want the third month, 5th day, 2024. Um, third month, 10th day, 2024. Third month, 13th day, 2024 okay and then what I can do is, is I can use formulas I can say instead of this being the third month I'm going to add one okay and then I'll use the fifth day again and I'll keep 2024 so now when I take this and then I scroll it down you can see the formula will automatically update and it'll pick the next one down right so Excel is really nice use Excel uh, to, calc to you know to find patterns like that Okay, and we want to go all the way down until I get to the end of the year. Okay, um, and then here, so my date, I have a formula, date, and date wants year first, then comma, month, then day. All right, so let's see, can I double click? Yeah, it'll fill in, fill in um, those three days for every month. Okay, going forward. Um, make those a little smaller. Okay, so then I have a debit credit interest, and this is the same. So it's gonna, I can basically just copy and paste it all the way down. Okay, or uh, I could use that equal thing again. 
and then um, it should yeah it should also work like that okay all right so either way you want to do it um, let me make this look like a table pressing this table thing okay okay so now that I've done that um, by putting these dates here and these amounts this table over here actually automatically was changing okay so now you can see those 5,000, 1,000 every month that's happening, okay? All right, so then it's just a matter of, I don't want to look through that table to find all of my uh, calculated balances. So I just have to copy, press Control C, and every time I have an interest payment, go ahead and put that there, okay? Um, let's see, interest payment. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that for the rest of the year. Also, I could just like copy all three and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Lastly, I might be interested in knowing this um, this uh, interest payment, which is what is in this column here, right? Um, basically, how much interest is this bank giving me, right? Because at the end of the at the end of the um, year, I also have to pay taxes on my interest, right? In in the U.S., the amount that you pay for taxes is on interest and savings account is the same as um, like your general income, like um, that you earn from wages. So it's important to know how much interest you're getting because then you need to think about paying taxes on it. So uh, let's predict how much interest we'll have. So the way we'll do that is we'll, have, we'll use a formula and we'll take this um, number here, the calculated balance, minus what you had uh, prior, okay, minus the sum of any changes that occurred. Okay, so this is my expected interest. All right, and then I think I can, um, again, just copy and paste and bring this down. Okay. And we're seeing that interest decrease every month, which we would expect because we're taking out a thousand dollars, or sorry, we're taking out five thousand dollars and only putting in one thousand. So by the end of the year, if I continue doing this, I would expect to have uh, fifty-nine thousand one hundred and sixty-seven dollars in the account um, over the whole year. If I, oops, let me type in equals sum. Let's add up everything here. Shift control goes up multiple. Okay, if I add up all of my interest there, uh, I earned three thousand dollars in interest. So, um, you know, I'd have to keep that in mind. Report that on my taxes, right? So it's good. It's a good. This is you know a good way for you to um, you know calculate where your bank is calculating. Check that your bank's doing it correctly, and also predict into the future uh, if you keep doing something the way you're doing it, uh, what's going to happen.